Thank you. Uh, thank you for this generous, generous invitation. And I want to begin by thanking the organizers of this event, uh, to Hanif for generously inviting me and um, for, for the participants to be here to come and listen to me. Um, ever since I took over this mandate as the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights in the Islamic Republic of Iran, uh, that was in July of 2018, one of my principal concerns has been the almost complete absence of accountability and the prevailing culture of impunity in the Iranian constitutional, legislative and administrative framework. In my report to the UN Human Rights Council of March 2022, after having examined the absence of accountability, I informed the Council that while accountability for serious human rights violations represents a core obligation of states under international law, this was not the case in Iran. I wrote in my report to the Council, which I quote before you, I say, institutional impunity and the absence of a system for accountability for violations of human rights permeates the political and legal system of the Islamic Republic of Iran. The absence of accountability derives from various deficiencies within state structures, including negation of the principles of rule of law and separation of powers End of quotation. My deep concerns as regards the institutional impunity and absence of a system of accountability were sadly once again proven correct with the tragic death in custody of morality police of the 22-year-old Gina Masamini, who, whom you know died in Tehran on 16th of September, three days after her arrest for allegedly failing to comply with the country's Strict, strict rules on women's dress by, by wearing what we call it, what they call it as an improper hijab. In the aftermath, in the aftermath of her, of her death uh, in, in, in the custody of the morality police, um, the entire country was gripped for several months with large scale and nationwide protests under the banner of women, life, freedom. However, instead of recognizing the legitimate demands of protesters, including ending the practice of enforced hijab and ensuring accountability for those involved in the killing of Ms. Amini, the state authorities characteristically reacted in the most repressive manner. Iranian police and security forces violently cracked down on protesters, revealing a widespread pattern of unlawful, lethal use of force. I was alarmed and I'm alarmed at the level of violence used against protesters, particularly targeting many groups, um, women, girls, men, boys, religious and ethnic minorities, and many others. Um, since September 2022, uh, since the protest started, um, we have a figure of at least 537 persons being killed which includes 68 children and 48 women. And these, these figures are uh, those of uh, being killed by the state security officials. As you would know, uh, at least seven protesters have been executed on charges, including those of Maharabe, which means enmity against God uh, and others. And, and the continuing violence against women and girls has also been a shocking element of all this. Uh, cases of deliberate killings, as well as sexual and physical violence. Um, and now to the subject of um, accountability and the prevalent culture of impunity. It was tragic, but not surprising that the Iranian authorities have completely denied any responsibility for the tragic events that have taken place since September of last year. But the absence of accountability and the culture of uh, impunity prevalent in the Iranian legal, judicial, and administrative system has been a deeply unfortunate and painful aspect of the Iranian history, which goes back at least to 1979 revolution, and it can go back even further. Since 1979, we have witnessed that the form of government known as the vilayat e faqih the so-called guardianship of the Islamic jurists, has consolidated executive, legislative, and judicial authority in the position of the supreme leader, 
which is not a populated, popularly elected position, uh, such absolute power negates the constitutional principles of separation of powers and rule of law. Uh, the current incumbent, Ali Hussein Khamenei, has assumed office of the Supreme Leader for over 33 years now. The gravest tragedy, as I say, um, which we have witnessed since uh, the Islamic uh, Revolution, and the most painful one, uh, remains that of the enforced disappearances and the summary and arbitrary executions of thousands of individuals which have just been mentioned in 1988. In 1988, thousands of prisoners were extrajudicially executed pursuant to a fatwa issued by the Supreme Leader, by the then Supreme Leader, and implemented across prisons in the country. There are extreme concerns about the serious crimes under international human rights law and international humanitarian law having been committed through these executions. These crimes include crimes against humanity, including torture, genocide, persecution, murder, extermination, as well as enforced disappearances. The mass executions of 1988 have been followed by the state authorities' refusal to publicly acknowledge these killings or to disclose or to uh, disclose in some measure the fate of those killed and the location of their remains to victims' families and subjecting these families to threats, harassment, intimidation, and attacks. There has been a determination <coughs> on the part of the Iranian government to hide these massacres through false narratives and statements, distortion of historical data, and active harassment of survivors and family members of the victims, as well as by hiding the evidence, such as by the destruction of mass graves, systematic concealment of the fate of the victims, not providing the location of their remains, or not providing family members information about the causes of death is deeply troubling. Such concealment, in my judgment, also constitutes enforced disappearances and a crime against humanity. The massacres resulting in the summary and arbitrary executions, as well as enforced disappearances, have been a source of very serious concern for my mandate, as well as several other UN special procedures. And just to give you some examples, in 2017, my predecessor, the late great Asma Jahangir, noted in her report to the UN General Assembly, and I quote her, she says that overwhelming evidence shows that thousands of persons were summarily killed. And then she highlighted the right to remedy, including, and I quote her again, the right to an effective investigation of the facts and public disclosure of the truth and the right to re repatriation. In, in 2020, um, there was a communication um, in which a number of United Nations special procedures, including my own mandate, expressed strong concern, and I quote here, we express a st strong concern at the alleged continued refusal to disclose the fate and whereabouts of those thousands of individuals who were reportedly forcibly disappeared and then extrajudicially executed in 1988. The communication goes on to note that, and I quote her again, and forced disappearances continue until the fate and whereabouts of the individuals concerned are established irrespective of the time past and that the family members have the right to truth. End of quotation. So what about ending impunity and ensuring accountability? As has just been mentioned, after 1988, Khomeini's willing executioners were promoted to high positions in politics and the judiciary, where many remain today. One possibility, and this is this is one possibility of, of uh, possibilities of the, of the many, is the use of universal jurisdiction to try individuals for serious crimes, including crimes against humanity and other serious human rights violations that took place in 1988. In July of last year, as you know, a Swedish court convicted Hamid Nouri for his role 
in the torture and mass executions in Iran during 1988, as the court found him guilty of war crimes and murder and sentenced him to life imprisonment. The other is obviously setting up an international tribunal uh, or an investigative mechanism to hold accountable all those individuals who have committed grave crimes against the Iranian people. I have consistently called for accountability with respect to long-standing emblematic events that have met with persistent <coughs> impunity, including the enforced disappearances and the summary and the arbitrary executions of 1988 and the protests of uh, November 2019. And I would continue to call upon the international community to hold these individuals accountable. I thank you very much.